What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Gate Crash. Uh, fairly relevant thanks to the new release of Guilds of Ravnica. Pretty excited to be opening this. Uh, as far as value goes, there's there, there's not really too much unfortunately. We've got the Shocklands of course, uh, but really the next best card is Aurelia, the War Leader, sitting right around $8.50. Uh, Legion Loyalist right around $8.00. Lord of the Void right around $7.00. Really not too much in terms of value, but still, I think, a very fun set. Uh, this was obviously the second best of the three, in my opinion. Uh, Return to Ravnica being the best uh, out of that block, and then, of course, uh, Dragon's Maze probably being the worst, uh, if we're going to be honest. Uh, I don't think that surprises anybody. But, of course, we're going to look at this from a uh, draft perspective, so pack one, pick one. We'll try and figure out what we would pick. Uh, we'll do the best we can. If you disagree with me in the comment section, perfectly fine with me. Go ahead and do it. So, we kick it off with a Predator's Rapport. Two and a green for an instant. Choose target creature you control. You gain life equal to that creature's power plus its toughness. Uh, this is really a sideboard card. It's not a good card by any means, uh, but it's something that can definitely keep you alive against some of the early aggro decks, sort of the Boros-style decks. Uh, and so for that reason, I don't mind actually having one of these in the sideboard, but it is definitely not a first pickable card by any means. Uh, Scorchwalker, 5-1 uh, for 3 and a red. It has Blood Rush, which was one of, I thought, the best mechanics for, uh, for draft out of this set. So you can pay 1 and 2 red and discard this card. And if you do, target attacking creature gets plus 5, plus 1 until end of turn. So what this allowed you to do is basically have a creature as normal, uh, in this case a 5-1 for 4, which is not great, honestly, or a 5-1 combat trick for 3. Uh, which is great. It just makes things a little bit more lucrative. Uh, you can sort of time your attacks so that way if, say, you swing in with some really non-threatening creature and for whatever reason it doesn't get blocked, you can play, you know, the Blood Rush on Scorchwalker and all of a sudden make it insanely strong and deal tons of damage. Or you can use these as kill spells. Uh, it just gives you double the utility out of a singular card. I love mechanics like that. I do love br Blood Rush uh, and this definitely is way better than uh, Predator's Rapport, without a doubt. So, Leyline Phantom, a 5-5 five, five for 4 and a blue. Uh, when it deals combat damage, you return it to its owner's hand. Not a big fan of this. Uh, at best, it's a 5-5 five, five for 5, but it returns itself to the hand, so you have to replay it all the time. Uh, not very good. Uh, even if it didn't have the return to hand ability, it would really just be okay. Uh, it's a little weird that it's a big beater in blue, uh, but, you know, it, it's a 5-5 five, five for 5. Like, it's it's just not great, so uh, not that exciting. Uh, Syndic, Syndic of Tithes, I hope I am saying that correctly, a 2-2 two, two for 1 and a white. It also has Extort, which was another really, really powerful mechanic. So when you cast a spell, uh, you may pay either a white or a black. If you do, each opponent loses one life, and you gain that much life. Uh, the Extort deck was crazy good. Uh, you could sort of sneak out wins with this because as many extort triggers as you have, you play a creature and say you have three extort uh, car cards on the battlefield, you just extort three times, drain for three, uh, and then that swings the game in your favor just out of nowhere. Uh, it also just, you know, eventually will win the game. Uh, so there's sort of built-in built inevitability. I kind of like this better than the Scorchwalker, to be honest. I really like extort, so right now well, okay, uh, Executioner Swing, uh, white and a black for an instant target creature that dealt damage this turn gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. Uh, this is very reminiscent of Dismember, though a little bit more uh, focused, that it, it has to be a creature that's dealt damage this turn, which obviously kind of sucks because you're going to have to take a hit from this, but uh, it does only cost two and it's instant speed. Uh, so I do really, really like this as a removal spell. That's so far as the pick for my, uh, for my opinion. Uh, Riot Gear, Artifact Equipment for two. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and the equipment cost is two. So this is just fine. Uh, it's equipment. It's not that exciting. Uh, you would definitely play it if you needed playables, but other than that, it's really not all that exciting. Uh, Ivy Lane Denison, a two, three for three and a green. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Uh, this is fantastic. This is sort of like the Evolve mechanic, which is another mechanic in this set. Uh, and so this really does well with the Simic uh, guild. I think it's pretty powerful as well. Obviously, you're going to be able to throw some 1-1 counters on a bunch of stuff if this lives. Fantastic. Uh, however, it does take a little bit of setup time. 
Uh, so it's a little bit of a back and forth. I kind of like it. I th I'm going to keep it here for now. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, clinging and enemies. 1, 4 for 3 and a blue. It has defender and evolve, which we just talked about. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has a greater power or toughness than this creature, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on this creature. So the evolve mechanic was really about sort of starting kind of low and then building things up as you go. Uh, it was really powerful, in fact. Uh, Cloudfin Raptor was one of the premier kind of one drops out of that. Um, additionally, you can there are cards like Bioshift that sort of let you move these 1-1 counters around uh, and sort of place them where you need to. So it's actually a really powerful mechanic. I don't like it quite as much as Extort, uh, and I honestly think Blood Rush is a bit better as well. And this really isn't the best uh, Evolve card. It has Defender, so it's really not doing too much. Uh, Horror of the Dim, a 3-4 four for 4 and a black, and you can pay blue, and it gains Hexproof until end of turn. This is definitely a powerful card. Uh, without a doubt, being able to give it Hexproof means that uh, as long as you leave up a blue, targeted removal really doesn't do that much. Uh, and so I really, really like that, in fact. Uh, I think so far that's actually my favorite of the cards that we've gotten, so I'm going to leave that there. Uh, by the way, I'm just realizing, sorry for the glare uh, here, <laughs> uh, I'm using natural light off the window and so it, it's a little bit glary, but I apologize. Anyway, uh, Gore Clan Rampager, 4-4 uh, four, four for 2, a red and a green. Uh, it's a, it has trample and again blood rush for, uh, for a red and a green, discard it and target attacking creature, gains plus 4, plus 4 and trample until end of turn. Uh, I definitely like this card. This is just a bomb. It's a 4-4 with trample for 4, which is great anyway. Uh, it's not bomb bomb necessarily, as in it's not like super, super powerful, but a 4-4 on 4 with trample, perfectly fine. And it has the upside of having blood rush, so I really like that card. Uh, Alpha Authority, an enchantment for 1 and a green enchant creature. The creature has hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. I don't really like this card. I do like that it gives hexproof quite a lot. Uh, I think that's fantastic but it really isn't that impactful, uh, and so I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, Fortress Cyclops, a 3-3 three, three for 3, a red and a white. Uh, when it attacks, uh, it gets plus 3, plus 0 until end of turn, and if it blocks, it gets plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. Uh, so pretty beefy. I think I still like the Rampager a little bit better, to be honest. I didn't get to play much with the Boros deck. Uh, I did get to play a little bit with the Blood Rush mechanic. I prefer it, uh, and so for that reason, I think I'd pick that. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> Angelic Skirmisher is a 4-4 four, four for 4 and 2 white. It has flying, and at the beginning of each combat, choose First Strike, Vigilance, or Lifelink. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. This is definitely a very good pick. We do have a, ra or a excuse me, a foil here, an instant gridlock. Uh, tap X target non-land permanence. That's definitely good in the blue deck, but uh, without a doubt, Angelic Skirmisher is the pick. That card is fantastic. It is a bomb. Uh, and being able to just give any sort of evergreen effect to whatever creatures you want is fantastic. So uh, really, really like that. Definitely the pick in my opinion, but again, let me know in the comment section if you disagree. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below anyway. And of course, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack a Back video.